What's going on everybody, Josh here with Scrapyard Films and today I got another tutorial for you. In this one, I'm gonna be showing you how to get the absolute best recording settings using OBS, Stream Elements OBS, and Stream Labs OBS. These settings I'm gonna be showing you are the most compatible for putting into a video editor, which most people do when they record OBS stuff is they edit their video right afterwards. So instead of not knowing and recording in something kind of incompatible or where the audio is off, these settings will provide you the most stable and high quality footage. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you the best recording settings used Using the NVIDIA encoder. If you want to learn the best recording settings using X264 processor or your AMD encoder, check the links in the description below because they'll be right there. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you update OBS. You want to make sure you're at least on version 24. And you can update that by going to OBS's website, or if you want to use stream elements like I'm using right here, you can download that in the link in the description below. Once you're up to date, the next thing you want to do is make sure your NVIDIA drivers are up to date. It's always good to have the latest graphics card drivers for your graphics card, so I've linked that in the description below as well to download and update your graphics drivers. Once you're all ready to go, then we're going to go ahead and find settings on OBS. First thing you want to do is go down to video. And then you're going to see four options. We have base cam, it's resolution. And you want to make sure this one is the exact same as your monitor's resolution. So if you have a 1080p monitor like I do right here, make sure it's 1920 by 1080. Output scaled resolution. We do not want to scale this down. So we're going to make sure this is the exact same as this base canvas resolution number. Downscale filter. This doesn't matter because we are not downscaling. So you can bring it up to bilinear to ensure you're not using any extra CPU power to scale for no reason. Common FPS value, if we click that, we see a few options down here on the left, but we're going to stay on common FPS values. If you select the number, we're going to see a drop down for frame rates, and we want to drop this down to 60, because that's going to provide the smoothest video when we record. Once you've done that, hit apply. Let's go over to output. Once you're here, make sure you click the recording tab, and then your output mode, by default, it's on simple, so we'll want to make sure we change it to advanced so we can see all the options. Type, we're going to keep that at standard. Recording path, this is where you tell it where you want your OBS videos to be recorded and put to. Recording format, if we click this one, we see a bunch of video formats. By default, it's on FLV, but we want to change that to MP4. A lot of people like trying to put it to MOV or MKV, but MKVs are highly experimental and very incompatible with video editors, and MOVs are also not as compatible as MP4s. So most of the time, when somebody's recording their screen in OBS, they're going to probably edit their footage in a video editor of sorts. So if you choose MP4, that's going to provide you the most compatible, high quality video that can work on any editor and provide you the absolute best results. So I'm going to keep this on MP4. Encoder, by default it's on X264, but we're going to choose one of these two options right down here. These are our NVIDIA encoder options, and this is going to be using our graphics card to encode our recording. So you'll see two options right here, and they're very similar. One just has the new parentheses, and that one's the most recently created one for the better RTX graphics cards. It does also still work with the GTX graphics cards, but it's designed specifically for the RTX line. I personally have a GTX 1060, so it's an older graphics card, and I've tried both options, and I found that the not new parentheses one works best for me. It could work a little differently for you, but when I record stuff, this one looked the best. So I'm still going to go ahead and show you both options just in case you are using an RTX. So if we select that one. We can leave custom muxer settings blank. Then we're going to go down to rate control. Under rate control, we have four options, CBR, CQP, VBR, and lossless. Now, common sense would think, oh, lossless, that means perfect. But I've known a lot of people to choose lossless, myself included, thinking I'm getting a great stream. But when I put it in my video editor, it could actually make the video look weird and colored, and it's just going to make it look very odd. The colors will be off. So I really do not recommend lossless. CBR is constant bitrate, and then VBR is variable bitrate, but what we want to choose is CQP. CQP is basically a quality scale from 1 to 52, and the lower number you choose for your quality level, the higher quality it's going to be, but the more taxing it's going to be on your graphics card, and the bigger the file size it's going to be. So a really good sweet spot that I like is 15. Anything above 15, you're not going to see the difference in quality, but your file size will be way bigger for no reason. But if your graphics card cannot handle 15, then you can drop it down to 20. So this is going to be different for everybody, but a good base number to start at is 15. Keyframe interval, by default that's at 0, I like to change that to 1. 1 is good for recording high frame rate things. We have a few options down here, and they're pretty self-explanatory. Max quality means if you have a really good graphics card, it's going to provide the best quality for you. And then the further you go down on the list, means the worst graphics card you have. 
you'll see a bunch of low latency options down here and you really don't need to use those because you really can't tell the difference at all compared to quality and max quality. So I like to keep mine usually on max quality. Now, if you choose this option and you start recording, you could see encoding overload error messages on your OBS. And if you do see that, just go ahead and change the preset quality down to quality and you should be good to go. And if it's still encoding overload, then just keep going down to performance or max performance. So I'm gonna keep mine on max quality. Profile, we have a few options down here, high, main, or baseline. I've never seen anybody choose baseline before. The two most common choices people use are main and high. And basically high is for a little bit better graphics cards and main is for a little bit worse graphics cards. You're really not gonna see a difference, but if you wanna follow the meta, then you wanna go ahead and choose high. Now these are two new options for this new NVENC encoder. We have look ahead and psycho visual tuning. You're gonna wanna make sure they're both checked because when you do, it's gonna utilize your graphics cards NVIDIA encoder to its fullest potential and provide you the best quality. GPU, most people have one GPU, one graphics card, and so when you have it on zero, that means it's gonna use the first graphics card in line. If you have multiple graphics cards, then you could change this number to use different graphics cards in your computer. But by default, you wanna just keep this one at zero. Very similar to the keyframes interval number, two means if you're gonna be recording high frame rate stuff, that's the best number to go for. But if you're recording low frame rate things, then you can't change this to number four. But I like keeping mine personally at two. It provides the best look. The look you're seeing right now in this very tutorial are these settings right here. Once you're happy with that, go ahead and hit apply. And now let's take a look at the other encoder settings, the other NVIDIA ones, the older ones. So if you drop down in VNC H.264, the only difference you're gonna see are those two checkboxes. They are gone. Everything else is gonna be identical. So what we do is go to rate control, drop it down to CQP, choose our CQP quality level. 15 is perfect for me, what you're seeing right now. Keyframe interval, choose one. Preset, let's go to max quality. Profile, keep that at high. Keep GPU at zero. Keep max B frames at two, and bam, you're good to go. These are the absolute best recording settings. Hit apply, and then go ahead and try recording something. Make sure you're not getting any errors. Make sure your encoder isn't overloading. If it is, you're gonna have to change the CQ level and the preset just to make sure you stop overloading your encoder. But once you've recorded things, then you can drag and drop it into any editor, and then you're good to go. And there you have it, the absolute best recording settings for the most compatible video or using OBS, Stream Elements, or Stream Labs that you can throw in a video editor and edit with no problems at all. I hope this video helped you out, and if it did, be sure to shoot a like down there, maybe subscribe, because that'll really help me out. I'm trying to hit my new goal of 20,000 subscribers, and I can do that with your help. So thanks again for watching, everybody, and I'll see y'all in the next video. And I want to give a shout out to all my supporters, especially my super scrappers, LMC, HPL Gamers, and Old Man Beta.